Hello and welcome to On the Money, a show about community economic justice in New York City. On the Money is presented by the Neighborhood Economic Development Advocacy Project, NEDAP, a resource and advocacy center that works with community groups to promote economic justice in New York City. Today we have a very special segment of On the Money. I'm here today with Florence M. Rice, who many of you may have seen over the years on her own cable television show, 30 Minutes with Florence M. Rice. And uh, we thought today we would interview Ms. Rice and hear from her, and hear from her example. And I'm hoping that all of you out there will get to know Ms. Rice, if you don't know her already from her show, and think a lot about the work she's done, and possibly consider for yourselves following in her footsteps, as we have done. And I'll start just by disclosing that NEDAP was inspired to do this show by Ms. Rice from her years of doing her cable show and getting word out to people about consumer justice issues. So I want to welcome you onto the show, Ms. Rice. I, I welcome it, and it's just great to be here. Well, thank you. So I'm, I'm hoping you can just start us off by talking a bit about the, the organization that you founded in the 1960s, the Harlem Consumer Education Council and let us know a little bit about what motivated you to start the Harlem Consumer Education Council and what its mission was and the kind of work that you that you did there. Well, in the early days, it was myself and another friend of mine who we felt that uh, a consumer, that at that time you didn't call it consumer education, but just people aware of what, of, uh, of, of the stores and how they charge and the prices and just one, just simple things, going to the store, buying, knowing what you're buying, being able to know who to report to on bad foods. But it was very, very important. My whole uh, feeling about consumer education or the work I do is sharing this information, just not like some people, I know it, but, but to be able to talk about it and share, and especially poor people, immigrants, they, they need this information. Over the years, you know, uh, especially poor people and black people always was paying more for everything, cars, whatever they bought, they found they were paying much more. Furniture, whatever, you name it, that was it. So you started the Harlem Consumer Education Council with the mission of educating people about just, these consumers? Just making people aware and also begin to recognize if, uh, I can do it, you can do it too. And it's what you learn and sharing and making people wiser. Uh, one of our biggest things you spoke about uh, is the door-to-door -door salesman, which you got a, uh, you got a bedspread or you got a sheets and you paid for that a dollar a week for the rest of your life. And just knowing that people should know what they should know and realized how much many times they were paying for products. So how did you get word out in the early days? I know you, you um, sort of you, you started you are, it in 1963 and you formally incorporated the organization in 1967. How did you go about letting people know? Oh well, they got to know us through our pickets. We would picket. We picket on Third Avenue. I remember one of the ones though, and we picketed. You had a store. Uh, I think it was a Martin's, and it was between Eighth and. St. Nicholas, mm -hmm. and they said that that they would give you a gallon of paint, and uh, I think we got there about 9.30, and they said they were all out, and they weren't given. And I went down, I went up the street, and got some people, and we, we picketed it, but believe it or not, they brought a big truck, and they did give paint out all that day. So I, it, it, it was from that, and then also picketing Third Avenue, the stores. But bring it was it was it's interesting how people cooperated in those days. You feel like it's different now? Well, today, uh, well, you have another group of people all together. The young, there is a, a difference. I think people are more passive. Uh, I find that in in, in the field, they, 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 there's no uh, fight in most of the people. If they do. There's many of them don't know how to do it, so they don't get any results. So when you were picketing, I mean, I know the way that we know you is through the work around bank redlining and discrimination by financial institutions yeah. in loans and in services. Can you talk so, a little bit about the work you've done in that area? 
Well, the, just the, uh, the fact that we know and also having the privilege of, of being on the, the Federal Reserve and Advisory and being, I always say, where the white folks are and where the money is and the beginning here, how uh, and what they would uh, share with me that uh, I knew that we had no knowledge. One of the things I must say, I had some very good people uh, who taught me about when uh, black men and women uh, go to buy a car, how much interest they paid more for it, and begin to let people know, you know, you go out, if you have to buy, know what you're buying and how to ask the questions. I think that's important. In, in other words, they're out there to sell you. You're supposed to have, have enough information knowledge to know how to ask the questions and what to ask and always ask about the interest rates. Well, so how do you understand what was going on in Harlem in the 60s with the banks? I've, you know, you've talked to oh, me about well, that, but why don't we... Oh, for one, uh, that, that's a good question, because you know that uh, African Americans couldn't get loans. That's one of the things, you know, uh, that uh, they could not get loans. You must remember, uh, for a, a period of time, you know, I'm, I'm no baby, I'm 87, when I came in, first thing, uh, like 125th Street, that was like a segregated uh, uh, area. Blacks could not ha have businesses. And uh, so therefore, when, once you began to understand that how segregation uh, affected people, and still do, I don't want people to think that doesn't because I think now it's more subtle. Right. Uh, Harlem is a good example of that now because what they're pricing people out of the apartments because you can't out of the Harlem because they can't afford to pay the kind of rent that they're asking. Right, and now I mean, if you talk about lending, the problem isn't that people can't get access to loans. They can't get it's access. Now people are flooded with loan yeah. solicitations. Yeah, but yeah. On As, and this is it. Uh, well, every time I hear them saying, you know, a, 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 a consumer, ed, well, they don't say educating people on uh, a, a, a home buying, I said, oh my God, here goes some more suckers. <laughs> you know, <laughs> because most of the people go and they're giving you a spiel. And uh, people generally fall for what they hear because everybody has a dream of owning a house. But they, what the sad part about it, they really don't know the entail because what you got to, many times it always, and especially today, uh, jobs are never are not permanent. So therefore, you really have to know uh, uh, when you when you go to get into this huge debt, what you have to. I think with the other thing I think that's been brought to my attention, how you get a mortgage from one one. Uh, Lender. Comp and lender, right. and then you find they've sold that mortgage to, and sometimes two or three lenders, and you find yourself in a spot that uh, there's no one to uh, really go to, to to really find out. So, like you said, things are more subtle, they're more complex. P things but are it's more not subtle, more complex. Uh, used to be you could tell people things, and it was different nowadays that you really get when. I always like to tell someone when you go out there to buy a home or whatever, whatever you're going to, know the questions to ask, you know. And one of the things, like I say, with myself, I'm in court and I'm saying, man, I said we need to give, give classes and what happens in court because I think it's, if you don't know, you really get screwed. 